Radio 4. And now, Saturday Night Theatre. Henrietta by William Smethurst, with Elizabeth Cassidy as Lady Henrietta Barclay and Edward Fox as Lord Grey of Work. Henrietta. Have a care, Hen. The grass is quite soaked. It is only a shower. She does it on purpose. Sometimes she'll play at shuttlecock with her petticoats unpinned and they become very dirty. Oh, Hen, how childish. Mother says I have a propensity to wipe. I have little chance to indulge it. It's time you were married. I'm older than she is. I must be married first. You know, Sir Joshua Child's daughter is to marry the eldest son of the Duke of Beaufort. No. She will take £50,000 with her. £50,000? And various expectations, so the town has it. <laughs> we don't know the town. Do we, Sister Belle? I know, but if diaries grow so large, there'll be no getting anybody. Oh, Belle, sit down and take that sour look from your face. Husbands may come cheaper by next season. Both at some... Pretty gentlemen, they say. I should hope so. For 50,000. With expectations. You forget the various expectations. If I had such a diary... Well, you haven't. Neither have I. And I dare say we'll have to live here forever. Or do as you did, Sister Lucy and marry a plain Mr. Smith who don't want our money but likes our name. Such a man may not find you very likable, Belle. Oh, Hen, must you lie on the grass? Ladybird, Ladybird, fly away home. Oh, there is an old widower in Epsom who has looked my way. Oh. He has sons older than I, strapping soldiers who will come home and kiss my hand and call me mother. Oh, oh, Hen. oh very well. Oh, Cheer up, Belle. You shall have the pick of them. I'll stand them in a row, and you shall choose which one you like. <laughs> Come out of the sun. If you go brown, you won't find anybody looking at you. Oh? I think I might. Henrietta has a lover. What? I should like to know how, when you follow me from morning till night. Well, you must have found one somewhere. Mother is sure of it. She's half a mind to dismiss the stable boy with a freckled face. Then let her. No doubt it will save you from being tumbled before your time. Oh, you hen, this will she not do. She dreams about him. She always dreams about Stop men. Stop it. Every time I come to Durdance, I find you quarrelling. I did not quarrel with Mary when we were here together. Poor Mary. She never comes home. I wonder Gray don't bring her when he comes himself so often. Mary prefers to stare at up Park. Mm, it was an ill match. That's why he will not bring her on his visits to town. He's taken to other women, whores and doctors. Oh, Belle. He has a mistress. Every man may claim to a mistress, whether he has one or not. Shall we go inside? If he hasn't a mistress, why won't he bring Mary with him? He's always here by himself. Perhaps Mary finds the air at Durdance is not agreeable. It was agreeable once. Before she married Grey, she stayed here always. We must all stay here until we're married off to somebody or other. Let the air be like sulphur, yet we must stay closed in. Hen. She's having one of her tempers. She'll throw things in a moment. Well, if you sit on that damp stone seat for much longer, you shall have the pile. Then we won't be able to tell you and Mother apart. Good day. There. You've just no idea, Lucy. Since you married Smith and went away, life with Hen is quite unbearable. She always had a lively spirit, even as a small child. It's true about the Amour. Mother has twice suspected her of sending letters and has asked me to stay with her always. You? It's for her own good. Well, then you'd best not tarry. She may be going to the stables now. What? A stable boy is suspect, is he not? From the south portico, the southerly aspect. Ah. It is considered very fine. An idyllic view, a pastoral enchantment where milkmaids frolic beneath the mighty oak. Oak? That's a chestnut. And those milkmaids are two of my daughters. I, uh, I spoke but in poetic vein. Now, where is Arabella running off to? Oh, daughters, sir, uh, daughters. Mm -hmm. I have two married and two that stay at home. Well, may I both congratulate and commiserate? Mind you, Durdance can never be our true home. 
We are forever bound to our castle in Gloucestershire, where the walls sweat ice from November to May. A dismal place to have seen the murder of England's king. Do you suffer from the piles, sir? Uh, pardon? When last in town, I bought a chemical powder for Mr. Spooner at the Golden Half Moon. On the box was written how hundreds had been eased of all manner of pain. I, I trust the powder was effectual. Uh, though I believe there are many rogues and charlatans who advertise their wares. <laughs> the Earl's very word. Mm. At Barclay Castle, he said, they cured King Edward in half the time at half the cost. They did? I told him that if the king had not been shut away in so damp a castle, the stone is forever cold. Why, then he would not have contracted the hemorrhoids in the first place. Did uh, King Edward have the piles? You know your history better than I, sir. But the manner of his murder would surely have cured them had they been there. Oh. You have heard what they did with the poker. Those were brutal times, my lady. Yes. Over there, you see the conservatory. Ah, yes. In it, the Earl has planted 200 orange trees in honor of Prince William. I fear he'll have the shrubs up by Christmas and tulip beds laid as far as Epsom. Yes. The <laughs> Earl is a quiet man, as you'll find out when you meet him. We don't dabble in plots, but we are firm for the Protestant cause. When all is said, my lady, you can't eat plots the way you can an orange. <laughs> we do not trim for profit, sir. Mother? Oh, Lucy. Come and say how do you do to Mr. Swinford, the printer. He's come about your father's book. A new edition, Lady Lucy, with fresh amendations. Oh, father will be pleased. It's not every earl that can write a book. It's not every earl that can write. Yeah, perhaps your ladyship and you, Lady Lucy, could help with um, a little advice regarding the, the title of the book. Historical applications and occasional meditations on several subjects. That is what it is called. Uh, was called. It is not a title to stir the spirit. <laughs> you mean it don't sell the book? Well, I thought perhaps, um, soul thirstings after Christ, or even divine breathings, either would look well in a catalogue. Well, I don't know. You must ask my brother-in-law, Gray, to support you. He has a great dislike of dullness. Mm. He is an uncomfortable man, and forever about the place. Mm, my Lord Gray has some reputation for wildness, both in his life and his polity. Well, there's no wildness at Durden. No. This place is a retreat, Mr. Swinford. An arbor of peace. Mm. A refuge where we may bring up our daughters in virtue and honor and care not to flee for the morals of the town. Mother. There are no Tories at Durden, sir. Would there were none anywhere, ma'am. Oh, it grows hot. My peacocks don't like it. Their feathers fall out like guinea fowls larded in the oven. Shall we go inside? Uh, speaking of my Lord Grey... There is surely something heartwarming in the figure of a rake who spends his time in this house of peace and religion and roses when the London taverns are about 16 miles away. The Earl believes that Grey seeks some comfort for his restless soul. I think he's hiding from a sheriff's warrant. Mother, don't be ridiculous. You've been abroad, Lucy. Only last month, Grey led the city apprentices in a riot and threw four aldermen into the fleet. Oh, he's become a very uncomfortable man. There. Your face is gone into a thousand pieces. I am a cheat, a liar, and a rogue. So? You are a wig. See? Your face returns in the water. I'm very dissolute. My veins run red with claret. Now you are a Tory. <laughs> I've lately taken two other women. Two other women? Yes. I tried to forget you. To forget I'd ever seen you. Ever smelt your perfume, ever touched you. And I enjoyed them both. I hope they cost you dear. My God. I am married to your sister. Do you want to be ruined? Yes. Ruin me, Greg. Sister Bell. My guardian, Gooks. Set to watch by day and listen by night. Listen for what? Adventurers. Hey, I know you're there. Stay quiet. The razors are too tangled, too thick to see through. Hen, where are you? Mother will be angry, you know she will. Hen, Hen, you will be late for prayers. Now, 
Madam, madam, she is far too late for prayer. <laughs> Some would say I need them more than ever. Yes, who would look for such lust in his Epsom? You did. You came for Sister Mary. Then, you came again. Mary was arranged. She was never like you. Oh, well, she certainly isn't now. Can't you stop her eating? She does it when I'm not there. And I'm never there. Gray, have I changed since first you saw me? You're no longer... Yes? Thirteen. Oh, thirteen, seventeen, it's all one to mother. They're like figures on a Dutch painting, trapped forever on a piece of cloth. They're like that fountain, which looks as if the water is running, moving, alive, but it would look just the same tomorrow and the day after. I think I could stand anything except those peacocks. Do you know, I think hell must ring to the cry of peacocks. You need not stay. You can go to town when you wish. I am allowed to go nowhere, to see no one. Girls fall in love too easily. What? The careful mother protects her young. Will you take her side? Certainly. I want you protected from everyone but me. Uh, will you come tonight? Mm. What of Sister Belle? What if she hears? She hasn't heard for the past year or more. But if she's been set to listen... She will think that you are the echo of her dreaming. She dreams some very strange things to Sister Belle. Hey, will you show yourself, you creature? I must go. Gray, I am where I was. The same, and always. And always? You won't desert me. Only my vices are constant. <laughs> well, then, I will be with you always. Hen, no oh, hen, I know you I believe there. you will. Very well. My God. What is it? My wig. My wig. It's caught. You cruel, you cruel. It's caught on a thorn. Then loosen it. Oh, for shame. Hey. Run away and hey. leave the field to Sister Bell. Hurry. My Lord. I am used like a dog. I lead the life of a slave. I can endure it no longer. Is my flesh not mortified also? By the eternal God that made me. I will not be alive long, unless I can set myself at liberty. Liberty? Your periwig is free, my lord. It will be cooler soon. The sun is almost behind the elms. There will not be any elms soon if your father has his way. Just rows and rows of poplars. My clothes are very travel-stained. I don't know what my husband will say. Smith will buy you more. That's what he's for, why he was taken into the family. Mother, it's time that Hen was married. Oh, and who will have her? Have her? Well, she's a beauty if the town could see she's her. She's a wild creature, a galloping horse with a vicious temper. A little impatient. Too young to go to town. Then let her come home with me, for a while at least. No. Henrietta must stay where I can watch her. You can take Arabella. She is a sweet and amiable child. Belle is not the problem. Hen is my youngest daughter, and I will not have another. You will smother her with care. Oh, look at your gown. It is quite ruined. Yes. Besides, one cannot seek a husband for the younger while the elder is free. They do not think they are free. Oh, Lucy, have you come home to provoke me? Mother, they don't see anybody. They see lots of people. Only a month ago, we had a whole tribe of coffee-coloured men from the East Indies to dinner. You'd not expect Hen to marry an East Indian. Well, your father says we must stay very quiet. It is very dangerous to be a great Whig family in England these days. Why? If I bring Whig gentlemen to Durban, the Tories will say we are plotting to overthrow the government. We must be as quiet as mice. Yes, Mother. But Grey is not quiet. I'm always hearing of his brawls in London. Grey will live to be hung. I've always said it. Surely someone has come calling for Belle. She has 7,000 a year. No one of standing. Your father is grown proud. One smith in the family is enough. Indeed. I hear that Hen has contracted an amour with a stable boy. Lucy, let both Hen and Belle come home with me. Oh. I'll guard them well. And our stable boys are all very ancient. 
did not suspect our being together last night, for she did not hear the noise. Pray come again. Becky, I want you to take this note in a moment. Oh, Lord. Give it to his servant, Charlotte. No one will suspect anything. But if your mother... You must do it, Becky. And I will give you a gold seal. A seal with a dolphin on it. I don't want anything. It's who the note's for. If you won't take it, I'll go myself. Oh, my lady, if your mother ever finds oh, out... hush. Eh? Quickly. The hairbrushes. Now, Becky, you must pile the ringlets as high as they may be. Leave only two to fall over my shoulder. And? And I will get me a velvet hood come Christmas, or nobody in this house will know a second piece. Well, if your ringlets fall over your shoulders, well, then your shoulders must be bare. It will oh, not be modest. Queen Catherine's hair is so much finer than mine. How do you know? You've never seen it. That's right, Becky. I don't know why you do all this. Perhaps I mean to catch me a husband. Or a cold. <laughs> <laughs> we were friends once. Yes. And Becky as well. Oh, my lady, I'm sure I don't mean to be unfriendly. Well, but Becky is my maid, and I see no cause why you should covet her friendship. I'm sorry. We did used to be friends. Before you set about to spy my every movement and report my every word to Mother. Oh, Hen, cannot we be friends again? True friends? As we were, two sisters sharing everything. Everything? We did so once. Well, let us be friends at any rate. Henrietta? <gasps> my Henrietta. God! Becky, the letter! Where's the letter? Oh, don't give it to me! There it is. Oh, I'm sorry, Hen. I told her I could not find you this afternoon. The ink! Move the ink! No, stop! Stop it too late! Oh, I am ill. Ill with worry and distraction. My stomach heaves. Yes, Mother. Let me sit down. It is very hot. I thought it would be cooler. But it's not. You need not speak. I have been a sister to you. Oh, Mother, I was... There, there, Arabella, it's not you I'm angry with. Lucy thinks you both need a holiday with her and Smith. In London? Certainly not. In the country. I've given it much thought, and... What are you writing? Writing? Writing. Writing. Your pen is wet with ink. My... My account. I have been preparing my account. Arabella, search the room. Find out what she's been writing. Mother, Rebecca hears every word. Rebecca, go. Yes, lady. And don't shut up, or I'll have your tongue cut. Well, take this. What? As we are friends, take it. Henrietta, what do you say? Nothing, Mother. Turn this way. You've hid letters in your bosom before now. In this petticoat, Mother. Shameful. You care nothing for me, for what I suffer. I have been a sister to you. And now I have the spleen. Oh, I hear there is a new remedy discovered. A new remedy? A bar of steel infused overnight in white wine, which is drunk in the morning. Oh. I believe it makes one feel very sick at first. Oh. And that is the time one must take some violent exercise. Yes. Play at shuttlecock, no matter how peevish one may feel. And this effect to kill. Indeed. For one is so grateful when the sickness wears off. And one needs no longer play at shuttlecock. Oh! And a bell. Oh! Bell. Sister. Oh! Rita! And a bell. Oh, 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 she would not have me neither. And the very roses are obedient to her will. Yes, my lord. Uh, last year, when the Oxford Parliament was dissolved, I determined to go down to Up Park and stay there until I had weaned myself of this accursed passion. She is a pretty child. Pretty? My oh, God, she's no country lass of frolicking round the maypole. No. Oh. I've no love for anyone but her. No consideration for anyone else on earth. My oh, Lord. Oh, God. Why did I take the elder sister when the younger was a-growing? Why did old Roly take the Portuguese south? Charlotte! If you do not quickly learn to hide your... 
Cromwellian sympathies, you will be out of my service. Sure. Besides, Catherine was said to be a beauty 20 years back. She had black, doe-like eyes. Uh, and she brought the king Tangier for a diary. All I've got myself is a father-in-law who writes pious books and a mother-in-law is the piles. Cromwell betrayed us all. He was the little horn of Daniel, the beast of revelation. Hmm? He pulled down one king only to step in his place. He opened the doors to popery and the Antichrist. Yes, yes. It yes. is a great sin to lust after the flesh of a maid when God's kingdom is building. Tarnak. A door of hope will open into the valley of Achan. A light will burn among the crooked generation. There will be room only for pure and chaste people. And drunkards, whoremasters, and swearers will be greatly punished. Tarnak! Until that day you are my servant. And you will not pass judgment on me or my pleasures. You will not find Monmouth a saint. He's been living with the Lady Wentworth these two years. The Duke of Monmouth will bring the Lord's vengeance. Oh, we're an ill pair. You look to Monmouth for the millennium, and I for a dukedom. We will both have our parts to play, my lord. In the meantime, I want my dinner. My wig, if you please. My sister Belle did not suspect our being together last night, for she did not hear the noise. Oh, she is lost, abandoned. Pray come again Sunday or Monday. If the last, I shall be very impatient. Oh, my own child. He has seduced her to this. Does father know? No, 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 of course not. Where is Hem now? In her room. She climbed into her bed and fastened the curtain. I have locked the door. She will never come out again. Oh, I have treated her with such indulgence, such kindness. I have been like a sister. Hen and Gray, oh, it's impossible, it's ridiculous. I will not sleep while he's here. I will go mad. Oh, what if he comes for me? Oh, Belle, be quiet. He don't want you, he wants Hen. Oh, Lucy, what's to be done? Done? You must get rid of him, turn him out, tonight. What will your father say? He must not know, not yet at any rate. Can't send Gray from the door without his dinner. It would seem oh, so strange. I could not eat. I couldn't eat a thing. Yes, you can. You must eat if it chokes you. After dinner, Mother, you must see Gray and and speak to him. Speak to him? Yes, speak to him. But... In heaven's name, you must manage it somehow. <laughs> this place still stinks of curry. Uh, you should have been here, Gray. It was a rare sight. Oh, I've been told, my lord. Mr. Swinford, some meat. Oh. Don't hold back, man. Mm, thank you, my lord. Swinford's printed me book. <laughs> There's a great demand for it. It shows people how they ought to behave. Mm. Soul thirstings after Christ. <laughs> the uh, East Indians, uh, ambassadors to St. James. Were they not? Mm. Punjara, Nia, Para, and Kaiya, Nebe. Both hard-faced and much resembling in countenance some sort of monkeys. Uh, I believe that princes of Java Major are all turned Mohammedans. Can I pass you some meat, my lady? No, sir, you cannot. Ah, Sister Bell? <coughs> no, no, thank you, Gray. They wore garments of silk and only drawers above their naked legs. On their heads were caps made like a fruit basket. <laughs> <laughs> and at their bosoms, my Lord Gray, were poison daggers, exceeding keen and of Damascus steel. Uh, Ma'am? Were they dining at Durdance this month instead of last, my Lord? You would not sit and smile so easily. Sounds very dangerous, Mother. I wonder you did not fear some accident. Accident? My wife suffers from spleen, Swinford. Oh. She's tried every <clears throat> patent medicine dispensed by every quack in London. Ah. My Lord Grey, I wonder you do not bring Mary to see us. I should like to see my daughter. Oh. Bell, for heaven's sake. Uh, Mary prefers the air at Up Park. Oh, I can eat no more. See, my Lord. See the poor child. Madam, I cannot take blame because Sister Bell doesn't want her mutton. Gloucester lamb, sir. Sent specially from Barclay. I'm no judge, ma'am. No. No judge indeed. Wife, where is Henrietta? <gasps> Bell, will you be quiet? Uh, Henrietta has the toothache, husband. Her joy is quite swollen, and she stays in her room. No, she eats too many sweetmeats. 
The ambassadors preserved that teeth by perpetually chewing on beetles. Uh? And their teeth were black as jet and esteemed beautiful. They <laughs> spat the juices all over the floor, Hudson. Madam, I am indulging in conversation. I'm not proposing that Henrietta should take up the chewing of beetle nuts. <laughs> and what is the matter with her? Arabella. She has a drawn and peevish look. You're next to her, Gray. Pinch her cheeks or something. No! Don't touch me! Good God, what's the matter with her? He's only a brother-in-law, miss. My head hurts. I cannot stay. I will see to her. Excuse me, Mr. Swinford. Mm, Lady Luce. Mm. Well, madam, <laughs> our two youngest daughters make a fine pair between them. There's nothing amiss with Arabella. It is only that she feels some of the unhappiness in this world. She is sensitive to treachery. Uh -huh. She should be in politics, eh, my Lord Grey? To villainy. To the shocking face that the world puts on. Wife, your spleen is not improved. Husband, there is much that aggravates it. Lady Hen, my lady. Becky, is that you? Oh, my lady. Did you see him? No, he was already at dinner. Oh, but I went to the steward's hall while Charnock was eating. Charnock couldn't lose his appetite. No, he's a strange one. But he took your message straight away to his master. Well, then... We must be patient. Yes. Aren't you frightened? Yes. But I love him. And only him. I can never love anyone else. I thought your mother would go mad. I had a wager with myself. Would she jump out of the window or throw me out? I think she loves you very much. Perhaps now she will love me a little less. Now that I'm ruined, she may break me in pieces and make a favourite out of Sister Belle. You ought to have thrown her out of the window, giving you away like that. Oh, when? And she called me traitor. Oh, I wish something very horrible would creep into her dreams and make her squeal. Becky, please leave us. Go away, Lucy. Then pull back your bed curtains or I will pull them down. Oh, that is very fine. You foolish, foolish child. Have you no thought of what the world will say if it hears of this? The world says Grey is wild. But I don't care. The world says I must not love him. But I do. The world says I must be quiet until I am found a husband. But I won't. Hen, for a young woman of good estate to rail against the rule of her parents is within bounds acceptable. Girls have run away before now. Well, then. But not with their brothers-in-law, men they cannot marry. Oh? Are there no ladies about the king? By God, you plan to be the king's mistress? No. There's nobody but Grey. Grey, Grey, Grey may act like a madman, but you are the one that is insane. Mock the world, Hen, and you will never be forgiven, never. What is to happen to me? I don't know. Mother thinks to keep you locked up. I have asked that you be sent home with me. Thank you. Oh, Hen, how did all this begin? When did it begin? I do not know. You must. Four years ago? Five? He often sought my company and amused me when others would not. I did not comprehend at first. But then his passion grew to such a height that he could stifle it no longer. What happened? He... He wrote me a letter. A letter? I did not love him then. And when he spoke to me, I was frightened. Then after the Parliament at Oxford, he came. And I told him that if he did not leave off writing or speaking to me of the matter, I would tell my father and mother of it. But that was only last year. Yes. We spoke below. In the great hall. It struck him so he did not know almost what to say. He walked up and down, just like a ghost. Then he said he would go to his house in Sussex and never come out until his passion was gone. I wish to God he had kept his word. I would not let him. What? When I saw he meant to go, I would not let him. Oh, Hen. I told him that he might stay. But he said he would not, for he could not contain himself. That night... Lord Aylesbury was leading Mother into dinner, and Grey was leading me. And I took his hand and squeezed it against my breast. After that, he stayed. By heaven, I wonder which of you is the worst. Lucy, what will happen to him now? He'll be gone from Durdance within the hour. 
Mother waits only until he finishes his wine to tell him so. You will not see him again. Unfortunate? It is unfortunate. It is the world we live in, madam. You have attempted the ruin of my daughter. You have done worse than if you had murdered her. You have engaged her in criminal love. Yes, while I was in the next room. Oh, Sister Bell, your pardon. Madam, if you make this business public and let it take air, I do not say this to threaten you, please understand, but only that you might not mistake me. If you tell your husband, then I... What, sir? I know not what I might not do. You could not do worse than you have done already. If you tell her father, madam, I will tell the world. I can consider neither family nor relation. Sir, to tell the world would make you very black in story. Then we'll be ruined. We'd all be ruined. Nobody would come and ask for me ever. Sir, are you indeed in love with your sister-in-law? I am. You are indeed a great villain. You have never had a good opinion of me. No, I have not. Nor I. Be quiet, Bell. Madam, be advised by me. Keep this thing from her father. Allow Henrietta to go abroad in public places with you. If you promise to do so, then I will always avoid them. It is impossible. Madam, for a young lady to sit at home always will not get her easily out of such a thing as this. This is very true. From this day, my lord, the Lady Henrietta will be locked in her room always. I will place a bar across the window. I will put a French woman again to sleep with her. And she shall never, never be in any place where you might meet her. This is cruelty. Senseless and to no purpose. Madam, if I promise upon mine honour never to come of close to her again. what use are your promises? Did you not promise to love my daughter Mary? You are a rascal and a rogue. So be it. Sir, you must go. Leave this room. Leave this house. Leave this country. Would you not also have me leave this world entirely? Oh, Mother. Give me my choice, madam. Either be drowned or hanged. My lord, be quiet. Have you got the ladder? Be quiet, I said. My God, do those peacocks ever sleep? It is an owl, my lord. Oh, yes. Well, you're familiar with all this creeping about at dead of night. In the Lord's service. Oh, yeah. And what did you intend to do with the crown jewels? Our rulers are the rulers of Sodom and Gomorrah, and the crown and scepter are the symbols of their might. Oh, poor blood. Colonel, blood betrayed us. He became the king's favorite. Yes. Well, the king doesn't make him kidnap dukes of the realm, does he? The king doesn't expect him to crawl out of a tower with a scepter of England stuffed in his pocket. The fifth monarchy is too stiff with its servants. The horses are by the park gates. This is not wise. I guess it isn't. Look, there's still a candle lit in our room. I wonder what time it is. The moon is still high. High and full, swelling proudly in the sky, smooth and round like pale ivory. There are other women. I have tried them. Oh, that the flesh should be so weak. Charnock, her mother is determined to lock her up, and it's my doing. I cannot abandon her, run away from her screeching mother, her way-faced sister, this pious suffocating place. Besides, I love her with all my heart. And with all your body. No. Well, if I'm to help the fifth monarchy to destroy sin, then the fifth monarchy must help me to sin while I can. Now, for heaven's sake, take care with the ladder. Sister Bell sleeps in the next room, and if I lean in on her slumbers, there'll be the very devil to pay. The light still burns. You must wait. Oh, I know you wrote to him. But to who else besides? You might have written to the world. Oh, curse the day you were ever taught to write. Mother, I am very tired. I am almost asleep. Yes, I believe you must be very tired. You do not often sleep at night. Sister! Henrietta, draw back your curtains this instant. I am already asleep. Child, I wish... 
English only, to be sure. There has been no other. Mother, I never knew or writ to any man but him. And if he shows my letters, he will expose himself for a base, unworthy man. Good night. Base and unworthy? Oh, he is base and unworthy. Poor Mary, poor Sister Grey. She didn't want him. Henrietta, listen to me. Your Sister Grey is good-natured and religious. I make no doubt she will forgive you the folly of your youth. Oh, Henrietta, he has made it his business to delude and entice you. You are young and he is cunning. Oh, child, if you will use this wicked brother-in-law as he deserves, I will treat you as a sister more than a daughter. Oh, child... Youth and virtue and honor are too much to sacrifice for a base brother-in-law. Mother, where is he? He is gone. Gone? Oh, Hen, trust to the friendship of your mother. Do as you ought to do, and I am confident we shall bring you clear of this ugly business. Does my father know? My fault? No. Lucy would not let us tell you. Oh, go away, oh. Belle. Oh, be quiet, child. Nothing's fair. She's still the favourite, although she is a whore. Annabella, go and call Rebecca. Yes, Mother. Do not be melancholy. Do not heed her words. Mother, I did not mean to offend you. I did not mean to do ill. You are a young girl. A young girl who hearkened to his love. But I have sent him to France, where he must stay some months, by which time this may all be forgotten. Madam. Rebecca, close the window. Oh, no. It's too hot. The night air carries strange vapors. And besides, it's cooler now the moon has risen. Please, Mother. Oh, child. Child. Will you still not trust your mother? Do as you will. Becky, see to your mistress's comfort. And do not leave the candle to burn. No, madam. And am I to sleep on the floor? For tonight only. I will arrange a companion woman tomorrow who will sleep in the room always. Good night, Henrietta. Becky? Yes, my lady. Put out the candle. Quickly. Oh, oh, dear. And my flowered gown. I must have my flowered gown. And what's laid out for the morning? Your gown with the red and white stripes. I'll wear it also. Have you ever been to London, Becky? No, never. It's not so strange a place. They're very smoky. What's that? Oh, it's at the window. Help him in. Oh, dear. Henrietta. Henrietta, oh, thank heaven I have him. Oh, sir. By God, the wrong window. No, Gray, the wrong maid. <laughs> Henrietta. Hen, I love nothing on earth but you. Let me carry you from this place. Can I trust you? Not to let me fall? If you fall... We will both fall. I'm sorry, Lucy. I, I can't help it. I can't sleep because of the noises in my room. Oh, Belle. Come, sit on my bed. I want to talk to you anyway. Oh, I'm cold. Here. I wanted my maid to sleep in my room, but Mother wouldn't allow it. You've surely not told your maid about Hen. I tell her nothing. She tells me nothing. I, I wish I had Becky for a maid. Oh, Belle. I can't help it. They tell each other so much. I have such dreams and can tell them to nobody. Everyone has dreams. Dreams of Charnock. What? Grace Gentleman? He was his coachman once. Oh, Lucy... He must have performed some terrible deed for Grey that he has promoted so. Charnock is an odd man. Oh, I hate him. Hen used to say she hated him also. We both hated him mightily. I'm amazed you had nothing better to do all day. We've had nothing else at all to do. Oh. Hen told me the noises in my room were no more than the doves in the eaves. Night after night after... I feel so... Belle, don't you dare. Not on my bed. Hen and Grey, together. Belle, listen. You know that you and Hen were to come home with me. Yes, but it won't happen now. Hen is to be locked up and I'll be made to stay with her. I think not. You at least must come away for a while. 
I'll speak to Mother in the morning. Oh, Lucy, what's going to happen to Hen? Will she ever be married? Of course she will. Nobody knows what has happened and nobody must know. Now, you'd better run to your room. Oh, but the noises... Belle, nobody is awake except for ourselves. You must learn to be brave. song, merely a drinking song. There's not even a hint of the indelicate. Brown is obsessed by the pox. Well, sir, it shows you a university education ain't everything. <laughs> we'll compose the music by tomorrow week and you'll have a guinea for your pain. Mr. Swinford, is there truly no other way in which my music may be published? I have such noble compositions in my head. The best place for them. Um, Gadbury, times ain't right for serious music, Mr. Purcell. People don't buy it the way they did once. I dare say it's all politics or the harvest behind it all. Gentlemen? Uh, Gadbury, yeah. Predicts the Thames will be frozen over by the end of the month. And the mermaid's caught by Tower Bridge. <laughs> frozen so hard they'll use her as a ship's figurehead. <laughs> Gentlemen, if you'll excuse me. Ah, one moment. Um, the other song. The whore, the pimp, and the cuckold. Uh, make it jaunty. Like your Mercury's hawkers and tavern chalkers, eh? Oh, and... Uh, Here's your half guinea for the old thumbs up. Uh, good day, Mr. Gadbury. There's an unfortunate man. To have true talent and live in an age that don't want it. Has he true talent? Yes, sir, he has. Here are my predictions for next week. Oh. Oh. You see. <coughs> The Thames will roar as though angry with London Bridge for obstructing its passage. Well, that's dull, very dull. Aye, it's the season for rain. Hmm. When misers become charitable, courtiers as good as their word, tailors make honest bills, and hypocrites serve heaven with sincerity, then will the Lady H forsake a lover's arms for a parent's care. The whole town is talking of her. I hear nothing else. But will she be found, or won't she? I have no way of knowing. By God, the foremost astrologer in London. Oh, she will no doubt be found when she wishes to be found. <sighs> the girls of 17 cannot be relied upon for steadiness of purpose. And what of my Lord Grey? Swinford, I have cast my own horoscope and predicted a peaceful and prosperous old age. I have no desire to prove the stars wrong. What? He's a puff of air. A coffeehouse rake with an army of hobbledehoys who shout, No popery whenever he buys the mail. Be warned. My Lord Grey is ambitious. And he is the Duke of Monmouth, friend. You think that crew of dissenters, fifth monarchy men, republicans and rascals will ever rule England? Shaftesbury? He's half dead with a pox. 
and the Whigs are wriggling away like eels to find some new master. But Gray is no Shaftesbury. It's fantastic. Perhaps. Believe me, I've seen the man drink his soup. Now, what about your predictions? Surely you can say if the girl's hid in London or sent abroad, can't you put her in Calais? I, or on the road to ruin. She may have arrived by now. It's all mysteries with you astrologers. I was there, remember, when he took her. Inbred and overexcitable, a lot of them. My lady Barclay was half mad the day before and quite demented the day after. One daughter with a weasel face was crying the heavens down, and another was swearing like a Chelmsford trooper. <laughs> the Earl is said to be a pious man. He threw me out before breakfast. I'd half a mind to refuse his divine breathings. But there's too much profit in religion. The Lady Henrietta, did you speak with her at all? No. You missed a remarkable woman. To go so much against the world is very extraordinary. Cadbury, her father has a hundred servants searching her out. Can't you say something? Swinford, as long as tavern chairs can carry double, the sons and daughters of iniquity shall ride together through the roads of adultery. Well, what does that mean? I wonder you don't lose me, Gray. You can't lose anybody in a sedan chair. I mean... I wonder you don't get the lodging house I'm in. Mrs. James' is lodging house? Or Mrs. Wilson's lodging house? Or Mrs. Patton's lodging house? You must move again soon. Nowhere is safe. There must be easier ways of keeping a mistress. When do we go abroad? Oh, Henrietta. Henrietta. Oh, I'm sorry. Could you take me into your own lodging, then? Disguised as a maid. The disguise would have to be very, very good. <laughs> I can hear the beating of your heart. Yes. And I... Yes? I can hear another chair. Oh. Stop! Hey, you! Stop! I can hear nothing. Oh. Clumsy fools. Why can't they put us down with more care? What is it, sir? Be quiet. Do you see me the ring? I can hear nothing else. I heard another chair. Hey, can you see a chair behind? No, sir. Just a link for it. You'll not find many chairs round Wall Street at this hour. Perhaps they stopped when we did. But we've been recognized. I knew it was madness to venture out. I cannot forever be a prisoner. Hey, how fast can you go? Oh, we ain't the coach and fall, sir. Ah, oh, damn you. Let me see behind you. Ouch! Be careful, Gray. A thousand pounds. I was not made to be so squashed up. Sure, you're getting very wet. What's that to me? Oh, continue. To Mrs. Patton's house? Yes. Uh, no. Go first round Covent Garden, fast as you can, and back to Drury Lane. Keep a close watch behind. What, sir? It will be worth your while. All right, sir. If it were my father's servant, so you could see me by now. We can take no risks. This is the last time that we go to the playhouse. I might as well be dead. My love, my love. Just a little more time. Then we will go abroad. God, we need to turn. I shall be dead. If someone is behind, they must show themselves. We run into the fleet and be gone. Your mother wants you in a nunnery. What? A nunnery. I'm going to a nunnery. It was not I who said you should. I will not go into a nunnery. Whatever happens, I won't. Oh, tell them to slow down before we're killed. It would be for his own reputation and honour to make things up in some way before they are too public. Mm. Gray cares nothing for honour and everything for pleasure. His pleasure at the moment is Sister Hen. Husband, you must send Smith to see Gray again. It serves no purpose. But, husband, if he were sent hen over into France, to Calais or Dieppe, we will find somebody that will help her into a nunnery. And when she is there, she may write to me, saying she found I had an intention to marry her to a match she could not by any means approve of or like. And therefore she went away to prevent her being forced to it. 
it would be as plausible a thing as any in the world. Yes, Mother. And when her letter comes, I will show it about to all my friends. Then I shall go over to France to fetch her back again to show I'd receive her back into her home with honour. Madam, our son-in-law declares himself innocent. He swears he is a sorely injured man. He is the most guilty man on earth. He is indeed the veriest hell rake in the world. I have a hundred servants on the streets searching for my daughter. I have offered money to any who report her whereabouts. For three months I have searched. Father, you're doing all you can. I suppose he may tire of her soon. And then we must find someone that will marry her. If any divine of the Church of England can be found to treat about it. I could find a hundred such. And she would take six thousand pounds with her? Yes. It was ever her portion. Perhaps, perhaps it is worth trying. If Hen refuses to come back home. But why will she not? What has possessed her to this desperate act? I'm sure it was none of my doing. A favorite child. Father, send word to Gray that if he sends Henrietta home or places her in a third hand where we can treat with someone about it, her marriage will be speedily arranged. There are, I suppose, men who will marry for six thousand pounds. One or two. I have spent my life fighting to maintain the ancient honor of our family. You remember my quarrel with Lord Lawar over precedence when he walked before me into the guild hall? Yes, Father, we all remember it. Husband, tell Gray that if he can contribute to carry Henrietta into a place where she may be safe and not visit her himself, he shall have two thousand pounds to do it. No. By heaven, I will not. For the honor of our family. In all honor, such a message is not fit for me to send or Gray to receive, however barbarously he has treated us. Send Smith to treat with him decently, and something may yet be saved. Singleton, Buffett, Halliwell. Halliwell? He was Blood's man. He can't be trusted with blood in the king's pen. Parrot to carry, must have fake. Is he still alive? My God, my mother frightened me in the cradle with tales of feet. He preached in Blackfriars not a month ago. He is heavy in the Lord's work. Go on. Richard Rumbold. The last of Cromwell's Ironsides. Patch, old medley, Sir Robert Peyton. Ah, oh, Peyton's mad. Not three years since he planned to murder Charles, the Duke of York, and William of Orange. The use of temporal weapons of war is a lawful means to God's institution. No. My lord, tell your fifth monarchy that Monmouth says no. When Charles dies, and God knows he'd die now if his mistresses would let him, but when he dies will be the time for those who would support the Protestant cause to unite. There are many men impatient for the Lord's work. If you are so impatient, why don't you leave my room and set about it? Henrietta. Get him out of here. Tell him to send Becky in. I want to undress and go to my bed. Go, but uh, wait up for me. I shall be home before dawn. Oh, Lord. I am sorry, my lady, to have used your chamber for idle chatter with my servant. Gray, how much longer must I stay in this place? You like it not? I like it not. I know of none better. You only just got out of Wild Street before your father's servants were banging on the door. My own house is watched. The houses of my friends. London is very small. It is not so small as this room. And I dare not stir outside. When Becky came in this morning, the mistress and maid were peering from the doorway, half crazed to see who I was. I was obliged to pull the bedclothes over my head. I am sorry. You needs must live somewhere quiet, for you're getting very notorious. Gray, let's go to the playhouse. What? The playhouse. I did not come to London to sit all day in some scurvy lodging house. I'll not go to the playhouse with you again. You won't. Henrietta. So, you won't. We will stew here. Or at least I will. It's plaguey cold, and the stench of ale comes up from the tavern. It's the town, madam. The place you ran away for. No, Gray. I ran away for you. My glass is empty. Henrietta, you know that I would give my very life... Perhaps you shall. What? Brother George seeks to be ordained, but perchance he may try to run you through 
first. God, that he try. I've had my fill of arguing with your sisters. Mary's scarce sane. I packed her off to France again, and Lucy waits at every turn with that husband of hers. I would like to talk to Lucy. You would? Oh, no. I wish we were in France. We could be free there, or Holland. We must go sometime, for we cannot ever live in England now. Henrietta, I cannot leave England now. Not at this moment. I am deep in the confidence of the Duke. I am a link with certain other elements who could prove of use when the king dies. We always knew there was something strange about Charnock. We never liked him. And you should have been with the Duke on his progress through the West. The people flocked to him to touch the hem of his coat. They called him the Protestant saviour, the man who would save them from popery. He will be king. And you, my lord? Well, I, I may hope for some reward. Henrietta, I'm awaiting great events, greater than any that you might imagine. Yes, Grey. Listen, Shaftesbury is broken. Our other leaders, Russell, Sidney, they're frightened to open their doors. They're motionless, <sighs> like snow figures at a frost fair. Is the tent froze over already? What? Oh, no, no. I look forward to a frost fair. Is it really true that whole streets of shops are built upon the ice and carriages are driven everywhere? Yes. I wonder the horses don't fall over. Sand is scattered, and their hooves are wrapped in cloth. Oh. Madam, you used not at one time to be so dull. You used not at one time to talk politics at me, sir. By heaven, can't you see that when the king dies... The king is in the best of health, so Wild Street had it, and makes sport daily with his three concubines. Aye, aye, and while he's with his mistresses and plays cards, the Catholics are creeping back into England, and the charter of every Whig borough's being recalled, and the Duke of York prepares to receive a papal nuncio. Only Monmouth can save us. Only Monmouth can give you a dukedom. Ah, who cares for a dukedom? You do. You have the holy hiccups. Hypocrisy is a great weak failing. You'd best be very careful. There's a rhyme on the streets about you. Better by far to be honestly sotting than live to be hanged for cabaling and plotting. Ha, ha! I'll be mistress to a Tory next time. By God, you'll be mistress to nobody but me. Well, well. My lady. Ah, I must go. Oh. Look after her, Becky. Grey, nothing will make me go home. Nothing will make me send you home. You will be safe here. Good night. Well, Becky, it is a pleasant world, this. My lady, there was a soldier on the stairs, an officer. He was arguing with Mr. Jones. I think he wanted to know your name. Jones will not tell him. He seemed a very colic sort of man. I wonder what I will do if Grey grows tired of me. You must not let him. Hmm. I must practice to be pleasant. I think I'll see a stargazer tomorrow. I should like to know what the future holds. Lord, I wouldn't want to know that. <laughs> Perhaps not. Henrietta! You cannot stay here. Betty, pack your mistress's clothes. Oh, Grey, again? Yes, again. Hurry, Betty. Captain Fitzgerald, officer in Colonel Churchill's regiment of dragoons. Uh, the King's own Royal Regiment of Dragoons, madam. Oh, I, I, I'm afraid my father... I'm afraid the Earl of Barclay is not in. He's gone to see the Lord Chief Justice. Well? Oh, Lucy, here is Captain Fitzgerald. He says he knows something about hen. Indeed. I have lodgings at the house of a David Jones, madam, at Charing Cross, against the statue. I have occasion sometimes to go to Windsor to wait upon His Majesty. Oh. Uh, well, some wine for the captain. Oh, yes, of course. Some nights ago, coming home to my lodgings, my servant told me that a lodger was lately come to the house who lay in the upper rooms. I asked who it was, and he told me it was a mistress of my Lord Grey's. Oh, but it could be anyone. Hush, Bell. I thought no more of this, until, being in company last night, there was some discourse about my Lady Henrietta Barclay being gone from her father's, as it was the talk of the town. I came home about nine o'clock at night, and having no servant just then ready, Mr. Jones himself came very kindly to put me to bed. 
Your wine, Captain. Thank you. I said to Mr. Jones, you cannot but hear of my Lady Barclay's being run away, and I have a suspicion you conceal her in your house. If you do, I said, you do a very dishonest thing, a very ill thing. Oh, Captain, that was well spoken. Yes. Well, he grew very angry and told me that as long as I lodged in his house quietly, I need not trouble myself who lodged there besides. He must be a great villain. Well, I told him I was resolved to go into the room and know who the lady was that lay there. He again grew angry, but I went from him to my sword. Oh. I seized it and was going up the stairs. Then he said to me, Pray, Captain Fitzgerald, do not offer such a thing as this. You would take it unkindly to have your house searched at this time of night. And he promised that this morning I should see who the lady was. Was it Hen? Oh, how is she? Is she well? This morning, the lady was gone. Oh. Uh, thank you, Captain. I will tell my father what you've told us. I hope I have been of service. Oh, yes. Your service has been very great. Ma'am. Uh, Captain, hmm? do, do you uh, often wait upon His Majesty at Windsor? The world will still say, please, Your Honour, to some high knaves and Your Ladyship to some great whores, while the lesser rogues shall be hanged and the poor strumpet whipped. I am a true astrologer. I have studied my art. It has the reek of sedition about it. I should like to predict the end of the world, but it would surely come to happen. Hmm. On Tuesday in Fleet Street, whoring will be as cheap as neck beef. Knavery esteemed commendable ingenuity, and drinking to excess the only talent of a gentleman. <laughs> Why, you will make people very melancholy. It is the way I feel. <sighs> so long as it sells. I'll need your predictions a day early next week, for the Thames is freezing hard. You're drunk, Swinford. I intend to move a printing press onto the ice and print the names of the quality on sheets of parchment. By God, you are drunk. Cadbury, Cadbury, I can earn five pounds a day by printing a line only at sixpence a name with the day and year set down when they were printed on the Thames. <laughs> it's a seasonal novelty. Aye, but the ice will melt and your five pounds a day be gone. My predictions will bring you a year of profit. Sir, hmm? Mr. Cadbury, a lady would have some private audience with you. Eh? A lady? Aye, a lady in truth. She wants her hand read. The quality, eh? Well, Lily used to get them. Every lord and lady in London queued at Lily's door. Is she a lady of the court? Mr. Astrologer, she will not sit all day in a hackney coach. Can you see her in a private room or must she go elsewhere? Sharp, sharp. I am the best of astrologers and my rooms are fit to receive any lady. Good day, Swinford. It is impossible. You cannot do it. I have no choice. No choice? Whatever Gray may have done, whatever Hen may have done, it is still a matter within the family. No longer, Lady Lucy. It is the talk of every coffee house in the town. And will you make it the talk of every alehouse in the kingdom? Oh, Lucy. My God! A state trial for the abduction of your daughter by your son-in-law. It is Aye, and Grey has done barefaced more than one would think should be done in any Christian nation. As I understand it, my Lord Grey claims that the Lady Henrietta is beyond sea. She always wanted to travel. He offers, however, that if you give him leave to visit her sometimes, he will send her home. Grey is mad. He thinks we're all turned Mohammedan. But the law is no answer. I have no choice. I've been put to great expense to find her, and it has availed nothing. I have no choice left to me. I cannot understand why Hen is not seen in society. It was society she always wanted. I would have thought that once at liberty, she would have taken to it much. Oh, mother. As a lawyer, may I explain how the law may resolve this matter? The Lord Chief Justice will issue an elongavit charging that the Lord Grey has esloined the body of the Lady Henrietta. He's done what? Lucy, I knew nothing of this. Gosh, mother. I don't like it, but there's no other way. The Lord Chief Justice is a Tory and we are Whigs. He will greatly enjoy setting his hounds between us. A capius will commit Grey to prison. And how does that serve us? It's Henrietta that we want. He will lie in prison until he brings forth the body of the person esloined. 
We shall have one or the other. Aye, and be held to ridicule before the whole nation. Pardon me, but this business is already ridiculous. I do not think Lord Grey will lie in prison for the sake of Lady Henrietta. That is true, I believe. Although, Lord, he has less honour than your Smith has, Lucy. Thank you, Mother. I have seen the Lord Chief Justice. The writ is prepared. You don't understand what you're doing. Who will marry Hen after this? We may get Hen back, but what will become of her when it's all over? Born with the sun in Cancer, under the mid-heaven of Virgo, the rising moon in opposition to Mars in the sixth house. What will happen to me? It is a strange conjunction. Yet we may draw a true progression according to the rules of your nativity. What will happen to me? You are impatient. Do the stars say so? The stars only tell us what we cannot see for ourselves. When I came to London, there was a star. It was in the evening and I awoke in my room. For I had been travelling long, you understand? Of course. I awoke as the sky was darkening. And suddenly... A strange star blazed across the sky from the park to St. Paul's, and everyone rushed about in the streets, crying out. And for a moment, I thought... That the stars in the firmament of heaven noted the adventures of my Lord Barclay's daughter. Ha! Be still. Do the stars tell my name? You tell me you are 17. The comet was seen on the 21st of August. The world knows that on the 20th, the Lady Henrietta Barclay ran away from home. Good day, Mr. Gadsby. Wait. You came to know the future, not the past. Shall I be happy? With Lord Grey of work? With him. You will be happy with him when... when a physician goes ten miles in his coach to see a penniless patient... When a rich parson dies and leaves all he has to the poor of the parish, and when a lawyer without fee talks till he sweats in a pauper's cause, go home, my lady. Go home while you can. Home? Even a girl of 17, infatuated with childish love, must see the corruption and vice that lies about her. Your guinea, sir? No. What? Shall I be happy when astrologers give up their fees for honesty's sake? You have a fresh look about your face. A year in London will age you a hundred years. Your cheeks will be scarred with the smallpox. London is a sad place. London is life, sir. Aye. Good day. Sir. Will he betray me? Of course. When? Who knows? This is the town, the place you admire, where honor comes cheaper than a whore in the third act of the playhouse. Well, tis a pleasant world, this. Henrietta! Henrietta! Oh, where the devil? My lord? Now, where is she? Out, sir. Out? Out where? Out in the hackney coach. They're behind us, sir. They'll be here at any moment. By God, Charlotte, get the horses. Send to our park. Tell my wife to send a hundred pounds to carry. Your wife is already in France, sir. Then my steward must send the rent. Hurry, man. Sir, my lord, what about my mistress? Your mistress? You brought her here, sir. Well, she ain't here now, and there's a warrant out for my arrest. Come, Charlotte. Sir, where shall she go? Nowhere. Tell her that I will send for her. Out the window, over the tiles. No. A swift horse to Dover, a hired bark, Cali by sunrise, and the Lord's work waiting for you. No. Open it. Last time I went over the tiles, I nearly broke my neck. And the husband would not call for the apothecary. Look after her, Becky. Well, sir? My Lord Grey... I arrest you by warrant of the Lord Chief Justice, by the suit of George, Earl of Barclay. For what reason? That you did the 20th day of August, in the 34th year of the reign of our sovereign Lord the King that now is, falsely, unlawfully, unjustly, and wickedly, 
by unlawful and impure ways and means, conspiring, contriving, practicing, and intending the final ruin and destruction of the Lady Henrietta Barclay, then a virgin unmarried within the age of 18 years, persuade the said Lady Henrietta to commit whoredom, fornication, and adultery against all laws as well divine as humane, impiously, wickedly, impurely, and scandalously to live and cohabit to the great displeasure of Almighty God, the ruin and destruction of the said Lady Henrietta Barclay, to the grief and sorrow of all her friends, and against the peace of our said Sovereign Lord the King, his crown and dignity. <laughs> Defendants, look to your challenges. Call and swear the jury. Sir Marmaduke Gresham, Sir Edward Bromfield, Sir Robert Knightley, Sir John Thompson. We challenge him for the king. Then we challenge to per avail, unless the king show his cause of challenge. For by the statute of 24, Edward I, the king cannot challenge without cause. But by the course of practice, all the panel must be called over before the king show his cause. And before the party can have his challenges allowed, he must show his cause. Well, Come, you tell her what she must do. You sure she understood? She will come. By God, she is better. Oh, I don't know how to get out of this. You've got to ask God's help to free you from the tyranny of normal laws, my lord. I don't believe she will come. She'll be a fool if she does. She's not a fool, but she will come. Oh, when will the Lord free his people from the Babylonian yoke? Oh, when will he restore to his people the laws given to Moses and wreak vengeance on these swaggering gentry and naughty nobles? When it comes in a case between the king and another party that they both challenge, the other party is... When will they begin the trial of grace? They have begun, madam. I don't see him at all, Captain Fitzgerald. He will be here, Belle, you need not worry. I wonder much that Grey can smile at us. I would not smile if I were him. ...taken away by this statute from the king. Choir non sunt boni pro domino regi. And therefore, if the king shall again, he must show... God's wounds me, you rock with a pox, my lady Barclay. By the law of Moses, there is but one penalty for blasphemy and adultery, and that is death. For what cause, sir? We will tell you in good time. Sigismund Stidulf. Becky, my lady, if God had meant me to love Grey, perhaps it would have been easier. Perhaps everything would not have conspired to cross us. I don't know. It's a senseless passion. Nothing of judgment or discretion can live with it. Do you no longer love him? Oh. I am where I was, Becky, the same and always. I never change, not once I'm set. Oh. My lady. Yes? It's almost noon. Oh, Becky. Oh, Becky, I'm frightened. I'm so frightened. Oh, my lady, don't go to court. Will you not go home? Your mother will be kind. When I came to my daughter, my wretched, unkind daughter, I, having been so kind a mother to her, and would have died, rather, upon the oath I have taken, than have done this, if there had been any other way to reclaim her, and would have done anything to have hid her faults, and died ten times over, rather than this dishonour should have come upon my family. Go and call for a hackney coach. Oh, I must do it, Becky. I must do as Grey tells me. Oh, it's such a terrible thing. It's such a very terrible thing. It will certainly cause a stir, but it will soon be over, and then we will go abroad. They cannot keep Gray in prison once I am in court, and they cannot give me back to father again once I say what I must say. To say it before everybody will be very barefaced. I wonder if Belle will be there. She will be very jealous. Gray, madam, tell what happened then. In July last, some time then, my mother came into my lady Henrietta's chamber 
and seeing a pen wet with ink, she examined her who she had been writing to. She, in great confusion, told her she had been writing her account. Oh, the sight of Lord Grey does put me quite out of countenance and patience. Pray, my Lord Grey, sit down. It is not a very extraordinary thing for a witness in such a cause to be dashed out of countenance. He would not if he were not a very impudent, barbarous man look so confidently and impudently upon her. My lord, I would be loath to deal otherwise than becomes me with a person of your quality. But indeed, this is not so handsome, and we must desire you to sit down. Perhaps, sir, you would have me turn the other way. <laughs> my lord, my daughter is here in court. I desire that she may be restored to me. Pray, my lord Barclay. Give us leave to go on. It will be time enough to move that along. Now the lady is here, I suppose my Lord Grey might be discharged in imprisonment. No, my lord. We pray he may be continued in custody. How can we do that, brother? The commitment upon the writ de homine reflegiando is but till the body be produced. And here she is. But your lordship sees upon the proofs of today, this cause is of an extraordinary foul nature. And what verdict the jury may give upon it, we do not know. Brother, you do ill to press us to what cannot be done. It may be we went further than ordinary in what we um, did in committing Grace, him, being a fair... You had better look after him. Do as I tell you, and we will both be free. Oh, Christ, it is a very wild idea. Believe me, Em, you, you must believe me. Yes, Grace, I have no one else to believe. Term, brother, that is to be sure. For well, there are not four days left, and my Lord Grey is to be found to be sure. There never yet before this was anything that reflected on him, though this indeed is too black if he be guilty. I repeat, judgment cannot be given this term, and we are bound by law to bail my Lord Grey. My Lord, I desire I may have my daughter again. My Lord Barclay must have his daughter again. Now, then, now. My lord, my lord, I will not go to my father. What? Are you under any custody or restraint, madam? No, my lord, I am not. Then we cannot deny my lord Barclay the custody of his own daughter. My lord, speak louder, then. My lord, I am married. Oh, 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 like this, 
first you in prison, then I. Henrietta, it stabs me to the heart to see you rot in a vile place like this. Hush. Or the marshal's wife will hear you. This is her best sitting room. You're very composed. It's well enough. They dine at two in the afternoon like common shopkeepers. You'll be released in three days when the term ends. You must come on after me. After you? Oh, Henriette, I dare not stay and await judgment. I have many enemies. How strange. For months I have begged you to take me abroad, but you would not. Now you will go, but I cannot. Three days. Charnock will arrange it. Ah, him. A private coach will be waiting. The Dover roads as dry as a bone and well sanded. There'll be a swift bark. No flat bottom bum boat or butterman's yawl. And I'll be watching from the French shore. What about Mr. Turner? Huh? I hope we won't take Mr. Turner along. Good God, no. Oh, he's halfway back to Taunton with a fat purse banging against his knees. Curse him. Hen should have worked. We should both have been free. You forgot about his wife in Bromley. But then you are careless about wives. Henrietta, listen. You're despondent. Events have taken a strange turn. But it will not be for long. The world is wide. Your father's spies can't winkle us out of Turkey. Nor my Lord Chief Justice's warrant run to the Grand Mosques of Constantinople. I remember now. The way you used to talk. Henrietta, smile. Smile. Just a little. There. The sun itself shines. Perhaps we'll sail to the East Indies, and I'll be a sort of king. <laughs> Such talk is dangerous. <laughs> if Monmouth will be king, then so will I. Hush! <laughs> a king, and you'll be a queen, and we'll send our ambassador to your father, and he'll spit beetle nuts <laughs> at him. <laughs> My father don't eat beetle nuts. <laughs> oh, Henrietta, if I can steal you from that damned nunnery of a home, what can't I do? You can't stop the world from calling me whore. My lord, the marshal says you must leave. Oh. Well, Charnock, it seems you are to travel. It is well to leave this nation. Its sins are so great the lord will surely destroy it. Wait outside, Charnock. There's little time, my lord. You must be at Dover by dawn. You had better go. Yes. Please do something for me. Pay the marshal to send me candles. I cannot get used to the stench of tallow, and I will not lie in the dark alone. Oh, Henrietta. To leave you like this. Oh, Gray. It's only for three days, isn't it? You come away, Belle, or they will see you. They're passing the park gate. They look very fine, you see. They do not seem to be injured at all. No, it was not they who were injured. I wonder Father doesn't invite some of the officers to dine. He would not mind a Mr. Smith if he were an officer. The officers have no time for you, Belle. They would have time if we were not in such disgrace. Oh, come and sit down. You know the sun is bad for you. There's nobody to see how I look anymore. I'll go and see then. I'll watch from behind the chestnut. Will you come with me, Hen? Go and watch the soldiers, Belle. Hen, won't you come? They make a fine sight. You'll wish you'd seen them. I'll go then. Mr. Turn came from Somersetshire. I hope he has not been killed. I do not think it likely. It was the poor cloth workers and the labourers who were killed. Perhaps he's in Bromley with his five children. You should not think about him. Well, even a pretend husband may be better than none. It was the maddest thing I ever heard of. Gray was always a little mad. Perhaps 
That was why the Duke of Monmouth made him his commander of his cavalry. People who are a little mad do extraordinary things. Lucy? Lucy, his father was an officer. And his captain, Fitzgerald. Oh, do you think he's come to ask after me? Oh, don't be stupid, Belle. Oh, heavens, he may bring word of Grey. Uh, Hen, go and walk in the Rose Garden. No. Uh, captain, uh, I believe you know my daughters. Indeed, my lord. Although it is some time since we met. How do you do, Captain? Were you at the battle in the West? I was with my regiment. Our brother-in-law, Grey. Did you hear of him? Uh, he led the rebel attack. Uh, my lady, in the middle of the night, he swept down on us, hoping, some say, to surprise the blues at Zoyland and fire the village in our rear. <laughs> it was a bold plan. Oh, Grey was always very bold. It was his misfortune to encounter a drainage ditch, the Bussock's Rhine, as it is called, at a point where it was impassable. Then, in the darkness, he mistook the slow match of Dumbarton's regiment for the lights of Zoyland. Match? Don't Dumbarton's men have flintlocks yet? I sometimes think, my lord, that our English army will fight till doomsday with ancient weapons. Oh, it's all money. It's all it comes down to. What happened then, Captain? Why, a sentry among the matchlocks cried, Who are you for? And my lord Grey replied, The king. Which king? shouted the sentry. And my lord Grey shouted, not realizing you understand that the lights he saw across the ditch were the lights of a regiment of musketeers, he shouted, King Monmouth, God with him. Go on, sir. But Dumbarton's men opened fire. Grey, it seems, was greatly surprised. He was captured yesterday near Southampton. Thank God he's alive. Not for long, my lady. He's thrown himself on the king's mercy, but he'll not get it. James is not like his brother. He's a papist, a man of blood. And the new Chief Justice is not an easy man. Father. Oh. Well, c come inside, Captain. You'll need some refreshment after your journey. Uh, shall I come with you, Father? You know I pour your wine better than any servant can. It would be a great kindness, Lady Arabella. Hen? Poor Gray. He so wanted Monmouth to give him a dukedom. He may yet escape. Of course. He's very good at running away. He ran away from Belle once, in the rose garden. And then he ran away again. Lucy, if Monmouth had become king, and Grey had become a duke, I wonder what would have become of me. He left you in the king's bench prison. Yes. Shall we go inside? The grass is wet with the evening dew. Let us go inside. At least Mother no longer complains when my petticoats are dirty. In Henrietta by William Smethurst, Lady Henrietta Barclay was played by Elizabeth Cassidy and Lord Grey by Edward Fox. Lady Lucy, Patricia Gallimore. Lady Arabella, Hedley Nicholas. Lady Barclay, Penelope Shaw. And Lord Barclay, Peter Dinerley. Charnock, John Malcolm. Mr. Swinford, Geoffrey Matthews. Gadbury, the astrologer, Roger Hume. Becky, Caroline Hunt. Henry Purcell, Richard Carrington. Mr. Sergeant Jeffreys, George Woolley. And Sir Francis Pemberton, Jack Holloway. The play was produced and directed in our Birmingham studios by Roger Pine. And now here is the weather forecast for tomorrow. It'll continue very cold with widespread moderate or severe frost at first.